All right, this video is going to introduce a very versatile method for integration, and this is called substitution, sometimes called u-substitution. And this is uh, to deal with integrals that are slightly more complicated than the standard types of problems. One way of understanding this lesson is it really is the chain rule except for integrals. So it's going to look a lot like the chain rule except in reverse. So one thing I'd like to do is just to open with a pretty simple problem so we can get a sense of what this looks like. So I'm going to go back a couple of lessons to derivatives. So if you think about something like the tangent of 5x squared, we're intentionally going to keep it pretty simple. So if you think about what is the derivative of the tangent of 5x squared, uh, we first have to differentiate tangent, which gives us the secant squared function. So we get secant squared of 5x squared. And then we have to use the chain rule, so we have to look inside here, and the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. Right? So this is how um, derivatives look, right? the natural um, technique that we talked about. So if we try to rewrite this using a different notation, right? using the integral notation, that would mean that if we took the antiderivative of this function, it would give us back a uh, tangent of 5x squared plus c. So the other way of writing this, right, it would normally be written this way. We might write it as 10x and secant squared, 5x squared. We would write dx, okay? So we would take this function here, and we'd say the antiderivative of this, and you can see it is right here, it's going to equal this function. So it would be the tangent of 5x squared then plus c. Okay, so it would look like that. So when we write down the statement here uh, using a different notation, it doesn't look all that complicated. Uh, when you find the derivative here, you get this function. So that way, if you find the antiderivative of this function here, we get this function back and then plus a constant. So the, so the one thing that's interesting about this is this blue statement doesn't look that profound. It doesn't look all that difficult. But as soon as we get rid of this statement here, so suppose for a minute we just erase this, so not having that knowledge, uh, you can now imagine for a minute, suppose we had this problem. So we are charged with finding the antiderivative of 10x secant squared of 5x squared. And then you can see the problem is a little bit more difficult. So we'd have to come up with this function here, or this family of functions. So the tangent of 5x squared plus c. And that's what this section is all about, is if we have a problem like this, what we want to do is to be able to come up with the antiderivative but you can see because the chain rule is involved here, it's slightly more complicated. And so if you're really seeing what's going on, you can tell uh, the importance, for example, of this part of this, right? So without the 10x, um, this problem would be much more difficult uh, to engage in. So what I'm going to do in this lesson is just to work out a, um, a couple of problems so you can get a sense of what it looks like, right, to work these out. So here's our first one, right? We're going to find the antiderivative of x cubed cosine of x to the fourth plus 2. And we're going to use this substitution method. So here we go. So normally, uh, what is the standard here is we look at the inside part of a uh, composite function, and we usually rename that. So in this problem, we would look at the cosine function so this x to the fourth plus 2, we're going to rename that. So we're going to let u equal x to the fourth plus 2, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is to uh, find the derivative here. So du dx, using this notation, this is going to be 4x to the third power. And then I'm going to move the dx over. So du is equal to 4x cubed, and then the dx. So usually at this point, you can pause and look back at your problem. So what we have done is we have given this part of the problem a name. Right? So just this part here we're calling u. And then you'll also notice that x cubed dx is elsewhere in the problem. So we could see x cubed and then also the dx. So my motivation here would be to divide both sides here by 4. So du over 4 is equal to x cubed dx, just like that. <clears throat> so now the important things, just to highlight them, right? This is the original assignment for u. 
right? So that is how we got rolling here. And then this here, there's a direct one-to-one uh, -one mapping. You can replace x cubed dx in this problem with one quarter of du. So what we're essentially going to do is to transform this integral into a problem that deals with x and then convert it into a problem that now deals with u. So I'll show this here. So if you think about uh, what this problem is saying, I'll just rewrite it here. This is saying the integral of x cubed and cosine x to the fourth plus 2 dx. So what we're going to do is to carefully replace everything uh, and uh, enter the, the world of the u's. So this here is what we call u in the problem. And then x cubed dx, right, gets replaced by du over 4. So when we convert this problem, right, this is going to look like the cosine of u. So it'll have this look to it. So the cosine of u. And then a dx times x cubed, right, this is 1 quarter of du. So it has this look to it here. So this is where you should stop and pause and look at the problem. Because the problem in blue has a very complex type of appearance, right? You can definitely tell uh, there's a composite function going on there. But then we have converted this problem into a new variable, mainly the variable u. But if you look at the problem in green, it is somewhat stripped down, right? And the problem looks a little bit simpler. And all of that is based on uh, picking a value, right? Or assigning something for u and then finding its derivative and then looking for that kind of information elsewhere in the problem. So our goal here is to finish up this problem here in green, and that should give us the answer to the problem. So if we continue this, um, I would recommend uh, pulling this 4 out in front. So this will look like 1 quarter of cosine of u du. And then this becomes a very standard type of problem. So we think, uh, what is the antiderivative right, of the cosine function? And so now we can get rid of the integral sign. So this will be 1 quarter the sine of u, and then you add a constant. So this here would be the answer to the problem. Uh, but it's common here that if, if the problem is given in terms of x, you might want to give the answer back in terms of x. So u is x to the fourth plus 2, and so we can put that right in. So our answer here would be 1 quarter, and we would have the sine of x to the fourth plus 2, and then add on that constant. So this here would be our answer to that problem. And so what we could do is flash the problem back up here just so we can um, make sure that this makes sense. So what we're saying here, this circled answer is the antiderivative of this function. So what that means is if you were to find the derivative of this, it should match the integrand that we see here. So the derivative of the sine of x to the fourth plus 2, this would give us the cosine of x to the fourth plus 2. But notice you would also get a 4x cubed that jumps out. So that will come from the chain rule. And so a 4x cubed, um, the 4s would cancel out, but you would still be left with the x cubed. And you can see that shows up right there. So this here would be the solution to that problem. So one more I'd like to do um, would be a definite integral, because some of, uh, sometimes these get a little bit complex. But the process will look pretty similar. So we'll run through this one here. We're going to integrate from 1 to 2 of this function, x times the square root of x minus 1 dx. So for this problem, I would start in a very similar way. Um, look for the inner part of a composite function, because that's often successful. So I would look at the x minus 1 here. And what we could do is to let u equal x minus 1. So there's no guarantee that this is going to work in solving the problem, but this is something that we can try in the problem. And then the derivative here, du dx, so this will be exactly equal to 1. So this is just telling us that du and dx are the same. So we could write it this way. So du and dx are interchangeable. So the other thing about this problem that is a little different, uh, once you find u and then also dx, is there's one more 
piece that we need to get. Right? You need to solve for this x here. And you can do that just by looking at the original assignment and then just adding one to both sides. So if you take this top line, if you add one to the left right, and add one to the right, this will give you x. So x is equal to u plus one. So just to highlight all the goodies here, right? x minus one can be replaced by u. Uh, du and dx are identical. And then also x is equal to u plus one. So the final little thing that's a little tricky and it's important for us to get this is these numbers here, one and two, this is indicating the lower bound for x and the upper bound for x. So we can read this here as x is ranging from 1 to 2, right? There's some variance there. So especially if you think of the area underneath the curve, uh, we have um, an important interpretation for these numbers. So if we're going to convert this integral into u's like we did on the previous problem, then we would want to get new values for uh, the lower limit for u and also the upper limit for u. So we're going to do the same thing here. So perhaps uh, maybe the easiest place where we can get it is right here. I'll underscore this. So notice when x is equal to 1, you can plug 1 in for x here, and then you can calculate the, the corresponding value for u. So when x is 1, u is equal to 0. And then when x is 2, you plug it in here, 2 minus 1, u is equal to 1. So that final little piece is this right here, right? You want to convert your lower limit for u and your upper limit for u. So what I'll do is to write this whole thing out just to make sure that this makes sense. And it's very similar to the last problem in that you have an old problem that is posed right here. And what you're trying to do is to convert it into a new problem. So in fact, what I can do is to bring this down and we can call this our original problem, but now we're going to convert it into u's. So this is how we do it. So this integral will be exactly equal to, right? So instead of going from 1 to 2, we're going uh, from 0 to 1. So this is going to be a new problem here. And so we have x, and x is equal to u plus 1. So I'm going to put u plus 1 in parentheses to be careful. And then we have the square root of x minus 1. So that is the square root of u. And then dx and du are interchangeable. So that's the big thing, is that uh, this problem here on the left, this is the old problem that was given to us, right? That's the original one that was posed. And this problem has been converted into a brand new one. And notice the old variable is x, and the new variable is u, including the limits of integration. So if the substitution is successful, then generally speaking, this will be a slightly easier problem to do. So you can evaluate this, and the important thing is that they're going to be equal. So we'll spend the rest of the video just cranking this out, right, and figuring out its value. So here we go. Um, to finish this one off, this is u to the one-half power right here. So probably the easiest thing to do is to work out the algebra first, and that's to, um, to distribute the u to the one-half, and then you'll have two simpler problems to do. So you can write this integral 0 to 1. So u to the one-half, this will give you u to the three-halves, and plus u to the one-half. Okay, so that's just um, basic algebra. So as soon as you write these as power forms, then you can do your regular integration. You can use the power rule twice here, and then the fundamental theorem of calculus with zero, uh, with zero and one, and that should finish off the problem. So this is going to be u to the five halves over five halves, and then plus u to the three halves over three halves. Right? Remember, we're just adding one to the exponent and dividing by that value, and then we're using the fundamental theorem. So we're almost to the end here. So uh, we can plug in the 1, and both of these will calculate to 1. Notice when you insert a 0, they both evaluate to 0. And simultaneously, we can do things like division by 5 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. Right? So if we put this value in here, 
uh, we're going to get 2 over 5, right, plus, put a 1 in here, we're going to have 2 thirds. So I believe um, that's what we end up getting, right? You can get a common denominator here if you'd like. So put uh, 15 here on the bottom. So this is going to give us a 6 there. And then we're going to get a 10. So this is going to be slightly bigger than 1. You're going to have 16 over 15. And that should make sense, right, for a definite integral, right? You can interpret this as the area underneath the curve, provided your function is above the x-axis. So if you come back to the original problem, this is the important thing, is we found this problem uh, sufficiently difficult to do. So if you start off by letting u equal x minus 1, we can convert a, a fairly difficult problem into a fairly simple one up here. And then you can use the regular techniques that you know to evaluate it, and you get this value here, just, uh, just slightly bigger than 1. So this value here is equal to the original integral.